Uh, welcome to my Chevrolet Corvette C6 rear wheel bearing removal. This is done on a 2007 base. You're going to need a 33 millimeter axle nut, a breaker bar, and a long cheater bar, and preferably a second person to hold a pry bar in the cooling vents of the disc and allow it to rest upon the caliper while you break free that nut. GM put that nut on with 160 foot-pounds and the axle does turn, so you will need to hold it in place while you break it free. Disconnect your ABS cable and string it out of the way. Next we're going to remove the bolts that are holding your caliper on. I like to take a zip tie and put it through the caliper and then cinch it down on one of the suspension pieces to hold my caliper up out of the way. Now we're going to remove the rear tie rod end and we're going to remove the nut and then we're going to drop the tie rod out of the way. If you see your boot is starting to crack or it has holes in it, uh, now would be a good time to go ahead and replace that rear tie rod. Uh, once you replace your tie rod, remember you need to take it to uh, Chevrolet or wherever you get your car worked on and have it aligned. Next we're going to remove our emergency brake cable and we're just going to hang it and the ABS wire out of the way. Then we loosen the nuts that are holding the hub assembly onto the suspension to the A-arm into the car.
So now I'm going to remove the bolt that holds the shock on. With the jack, I'm going to release the pressure that's holding the shock tight to the suspension. It'll allow me to slide the bolt right out of it. Next we completely remove the nuts that are holding the hub assembly to the A-arm and the suspend, lower suspension. And sometimes it's going to need a little persuasion. So you take your brass hammer and just give it a tap. So after 74,000 miles, the splines on my axle shaft are rusted to the bearing assembly. So I'm going to take a BFH and I'm going to persuade my axle to come out of it. Remember, this axle nut is a one-time use only. So even if I do bang it up a little bit with the hammer, I do have another one that I just bought from GM to replace it with. Okay, now we're going to take a T55, Torx 55 bit, and we're going to break free the three bolts that hold the bearing assembly onto the hub. And I take a towel with a little bit of WD-40 sprayed on it and I wipe all the internals clean. And I have my red Loctite and I'm going to put it on my T55 bolts before installation.
All right, I'm not going to tell you what the torque specs are on these because my 2007 might be different from your model year 2005 or even the model year 2013. So I'm going to say look in your own manual and uh, see what your torque specs are before you do this. Next I'm taking a wire brush and some WD-40 to the spline and I want to clean this up so I don't have any issues pulling it off if I ever have to do this again. So I took some WD-40, a wire brush, I wiped it all down clean and then I'll take some marine grease and I'll put a very light coat of marine grease on all my bolts and everything that I put back together.
Again, put a little grease on the uh, tie rod end before you slide it into place. Put a light coat of grease on everything. It kind of eliminates all the little creaks and squeaks your car might have later on in life. Do make sure to reinstall your emergency brake cable and the ABS wire. Very important features. So there is a Chevy service bulletin on this. Um, you need to put the red Permatex on, then a new axle bolt, axle nut. It gets torqued down to 100 foot-pounds, and then you need to let the car sit overnight for the red Loctite to harden. And yes, I will hit this with the torque wrench twice. So this is my first time getting it to 100 pounds. And now I grabbed another torque wrench. And when it clicks, it'll be at 100 foot-pounds. It's very important that this axle nut is done correctly. Otherwise, your wheel could roll off the car going down the road. So we reinstall our brake rotor and I'm going to clip the zip tie that's holding my caliper and I'm going to pull my caliper down and then we're going to put the bolts in to put the caliper back in place. And then we're pretty much done other than putting the wheel back on. So I know this is just a 20 minute video. I was able to do this entire job in about an hour. So good luck to you and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Safe travels.